there's going to be at the end of this process a cleaner, better world where the true narrative, the knowledge of God will permeate the world, fill the world like the waters cover the seas, as the prophet says. And so that will happen. The only variable here is the body count. And to mitigate the body count, it really depends on us, on the rate at which we reconcile en masse our hearts with the Creator. Look, we've created the vacuum or the absence of divine light or the absence of goodness that allows for darkness and evil to thrive. We as a society have desecrated marriage, gender, and life itself. And we've codified into the law of the land debauchery and immorality. Now, do you think that's going to bring divine favor into the world? No, I mean, it obviously creates the environment where chaos rules. And there are people that exploit that. It's a very hard to swallow what I'm saying because I'm basically saying that me and you are responsible for it. But there is a, there is a silver lining to that, which is if we are responsible for, for it, and it's also within our capability to fix it, right? So that gives us hope, but it takes honesty and introspection. By the way, I'm talking to myself, not to you. But to, to, to try to live, the operative word here is try, a godly life, uh, to improve every day a little bit. Uh, if you've made a wrong turn to repent and reconcile, that's all part of being a human being. But the key is that over time, we, you should progress in your consciousness development. In other words, you should be living life on a higher plane now than you were 10 years ago. And in 10 years, hopefully, you'll be perceiving reality in a much deeper way than you are now. And that's the process of maturation. So I would say the world is very immature when it comes to theology, when it comes to philosophy, and when it comes to understanding the purpose of their lives.